What was your initial reaction to Tom Brady going to Tampa Bay? I mean, like, my initial reaction from, like, a non-DFS standpoint was just, I guess this is this is happening, and this yeah. is, like, our new reality. Uh, that was yeah, basically 10-year-old my... Jim was psyched, because I grew up a Jets fan. 28-year-old Jim was more like, okay, cool. Because uh, yeah. I... For some reason, I've lost interest in the Jets. Who can say why? But yeah, um, but yeah. I mean, it was just one of those like it's kind of hard to wrap your head around Tom Brady playing somewhere else. But yeah. I mean, I'm excited for it in like a football sense, but I'm also kind of not excited for it from a DFS sense because I love Mike Evans, and I yeah. think this is bad news for Mike Evans. I think it's it's a combination, I guess, and I think this will be true for when we discuss Teddy Bridgewater too. It's different, but I don't necessarily know if it's like a a bad thing. I guess the big deviation between Tom Brady and Jameis, outside of thirty interceptions, is that Brady doesn't go deep all that often. He was thirty seventh in deep rate last year. That's based on passes that travel at least sixteen yards behind the line, beyond the line of scrimmage, and it seems like Bruce Arians is willing to mold his offense around what Tom Brady wants to do. But I also think that Brady's low deep rate, it's been a consistent thing for him across his career. He's never really been a chuck it and pray type guy. But I think when you have Muhammad Sanu, Julian Edelman, Jacob Hollister, James White, as like your, your or not Jacob Hollister, that's a old school Patriot, but like Matt Lacoste, when those are like your top pass catchers, you're not going to throw deep ball that often. So I think what we'll see is Tom Brady's deep rate go up from where it was last year, uh, but also the deep rate of the entire team go down from Jameis. But I think the increase in efficiency will be a positive for them. So maybe Mike Evans isn't going to have like 217 yard, three touchdown games, but I think that the floor for Evans should get higher. And I would expect the same to be true for Chris Godwin. Maybe just a slight come down on the ceiling for Mike Evans. What do you think? Yeah, I agree with that, but I kind of try to take a step back and, and think, like, we break down the slates every week, yeah. and I was just trying to think how I actually feel about this from, like, sure, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, they'll be a little bit safer, they won't have the ceilings, but how frequently are we going to pay top-ish dollar for these two guys if we think the ceiling is somewhat capped because Tom Brady doesn't throw it deep as much? I mean, Jameis Winston led the league in air yards per game last year, according to fantasyadhd.com. I'm pretty sure, I am jotted this down right, he led the league three straight years in air yards per game and has been top five or top four in each of his five seasons. And I kind of went over Tom Brady's like deep ball rate, his dot sort of per game last year. It ebbed and flowed. Uh, and he actually had some double digit uh, depth of target games toward the end of the season. Uh, I think he had like three of the past five. So, I mean, I don't think that I think that Tom Brady can throw it deep and I think he can throw it deep. Well, that's kind of that checks out in the data. It's just more. I don't know if there's going to be 450 air yards to go around in this offense. Right. And then I then I get a little bit concerned that he's going to focus more on Chris Godwin in the slot than Mike sure. Evans. And then I got just a headache with even le like less certainty, less volume to go around. One component that should be good for Brady is that I would expect even if Bruce Arians does change his system to be not as degaffy. I would expect them to still be very pass heavy. Tampa Bay last year was third in pass rate on early downs in the first half. So before script got in the way, before you know third down and stuff got in the way, they wanted to throw. I would expect that to still be the case. So like that'll be there. So the overall air yards won't be as as high as Jameis's, but like from a volume and a target perspective, they should be good. And like if Chris Godwin and Mike Evans are getting eight to 10 targets per game, even if like they're not getting huge downfield targets, that's still, you can do a lot with that, even if it's not necessarily like the deepest thing. And like Brady, like I watched a lot of him last year. Like it seemed like he could still go deep when he needed to. It was more so like he didn't have the, the, the capabilities to. So I guess yeah. I'm probably a little bit more in on them uh, because I think I still see a path to a ceiling, but I also understand your reservations. I think the biggest issue for me, honestly, is that Mike Evans, I don't know if he's ever had a yard after a catch ever. He just, yeah. He's like he's like an anomaly and just doesn't get any yards after the catch, probably because he's jumping right every, every like, which way to get the ball. Uh, Jack because, is yeah. inversely proportional to depth or a dot. Yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, 
it, but it, it's just not necessarily a ringing endorsement to see Mike Evans go from being dominant in the sense of like the 200 yard three touchdown games to kind of got to do something different. And I don't, yeah. I don't like that because I love Mike Evans. So right. again, I think this is better for Chris Godwin. 